Hello and welcome to the second in a series of technical webinars around some of the new Trillion Sites functionality. So today I'm joined by my colleague Andre. We're going to be talking about the new add-on service that Trillion Sites 9.1 will be shipping with. So I'm handing over to Andre now and he'll give you an agenda of what today's session will be around. I'll be joining during the call. Okay, thank you, Ben. Uh, so, uh, today we are going to talk about the add-on packaging, how we enable you to the package, uh, package your extensions. We will talk about supported extension points on uh, both content manager and uh, dynamic experience delivery sites. Uh, we'll uh, touch add-on service. Uh, we'll look through the list of scoped features for the ADL Trillion Sites 9.1 release and uh, briefly talk about high-level roadmap for add-on service, uh, present a, sh a short demo and we'll have questions and answers session as well. Uh, let's talk about uh, goals we were thinking about when developing add-on service and benefits it can bring actually to you. So uh, talking about the first bullet in the list, so no downtimes to deploy manta and maintain extensions. Uh, basically it means for you that deployment and updates for the add-ons will be done on the fly. Uh, and you will you won't need any uh, service or uh, IIS restart for for your environment. Uh, significantly simplify deployment of extensions and their configurations. Uh, we are basically talking about centralized storage of extensions and its configuration for a single environment or as well as scale-out instances. Uh, reduce the total cost of ownership, so no need in manual maintainability of extensions as well as reduce the complexity of upgrades and disaster recovery procedures and objectives. Uh, yeah, and passing the, the voice to the Ben. He will talk about the ton packaging part. Thanks, Andre. So, as Andre mentioned, we have a, a new format that we're putting together in order to ship these extensions. So the extensions themselves fit within a single add-on zip package. Um, you can define these in fairly simple format. So the package contains, uh, within this zip file, it contains a manifest. This manifest contains details of things like the name of the extension, the um, supported version, the, and then the individual extension details themselves for the add-on. So each um, each extension is defined specific to a component within the Trillion Site system. So within the extensions, you'll have um, references to jars for the content delivery site extensions and DLLs for the content manager and UI extensions. And these all fit within a single manifest file, and they sit relative to the root of the, the zip. So what it allows us to do at the end is package these together in a single zip and have subfolders within there that can reference, um, be referenced from that manifest and then it allows you to combine multiple extensions within that single package. So the whole point of this is mean, means that we can ship this single zip package, send it around, um, customers and partners can develop their own extensions if they wish to and ship them very easily in this zip format and upload them into our um, add-on service itself. And Andre will show that in a minute. So just going through some of the supported extension points that we have in the current release. So these are all the public facing ones. There are some internal ones as well. But uh, from the delivery side, we have a, a deployer extension point and that's used by our deployers. And this allows you to define um, if you want to produce your own deploy modules, for instance, for Trillion Sites, you could package these using this deploy extension. We have this um, content delivery mergeable configuration extension, 
what this extension allows is to um, modify the default uh, XML configuration that our delivery services use in order to support whatever extension it is that the customer or partner is building. So examples of the sort of configuration changes you might have might be on the CD storage comp. Uh, maybe in CD ambient, you have a cartridge that you wish to inject in your extension. Uh, or, or for those that are actually building storage extensions, which are sort of uh, the old, we're familiar with Tridium sites, the old um, storage extensions within Tridium at the delivery layer, these storage extensions can be um, defined using one of these configuration extension points. The next two extension points, the GraphQL schema extension and the model transformation extension, are used by our new content service in Tridium Sites 9. And this allows, um, allows you to build extensions on top of our GraphQL um, engine, if you like. So it allows you to expose new schema that can be queried within the GraphQL stuff. And the transformation extension allows any data models within those schemas to be transformed into a format that's understandable by the GraphQL context service. Um, and just running down, I'll let Andre describe the, the CM ones, but there's a couple of others in here that are relevant to the new Trillion integration framework that you may have seen in a previous webinar. Um, there's the connector extension type. Now, this is a, a generic extension that's used by both the delivery and editorial um, systems. And this is where Customers can define and build connectors, extension types that are used by our new connection management systems. And there's also support for the old ECL providers as well within that. I think I'm just going to run through the, the CM extension. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, looking through the list of CM extension points, uh, we will. Uh, talk about CM application data configuration. Basically, it's uh, a custom XML file uh, for the import-export service that allows you to import uh, custom application data. Uh, CM resolver is a custom resolver that uh, where you can define which items, additional items, you want to include to the transport package, and so the, they will be available uh, transport can be published to the content delivery site. Uh, same event system, uh, wi widely used extension point uh, with various extensions uh, where you can define different event handlers as well as uh, some custom system privileges. Uh, ben already mentioned the new extension point that will be introduced in 9.1 uh, release called connector. Basically, it's, um, it, it, it's uh, used on both uh, as Binance Society Content Manager and uh, delivery sites. It will be used by the connectors. The legacy one uh, extension point ACL provider uh, it, it was, it was previously, previously used and will be actually used by for the external content library providers. And uh, two UI extension points, editor and model, is used are used by uh, to define UI extensions. And uh, yeah, I'm passing the voice to the Ben. He'll describe you in a second uh, the architecture of add-on service. So this diagram gives you a sort of high-level view of how the add-on service. Uh, what it's comprised of. So at its heart is a REST, RESTful API that we have that's backed by two separate storage layers, the one for the um, packaged binaries themselves, where they obviously need to go somewhere when they've been uploaded. And then there's a database that supports that, which has all the information about the extensions that have been configured within those uploaded zips. And this API um, is a nice open API. It's can browse it, there's an endpoint to it, you can see the various operations available to it. What this API allows us to do is from um, whatever subsystem, talk to and upload and query that add-on service to the state of the various um, 
extensions that have been loaded into that service. There's obviously a, a UI that sits on top of this, so you will see that in the demo that Andre will show you in a bit. Um, and the whole service is authenticated using um, an OpenID Connect provider. So we've got some standard ones that we're um, supporting, but it allows us to authenticate, or it allows you to secure this service if you need to. It's, it doesn't have to be secure, you can run it unsecured, but I suspect the model that most customers will want to secure it. And that requires a small amount of configuration on the service to point it to the appropriate provider. So you see below here the, the kind of split of how the various extensions, so the small blocks within the um, various systems, each of them is an extension, but you will see for each service, you only have um, a specific extension that's relevant to that service. So on the, the CM Explorer one, for instance, you see that there's two example extensions here that that service would load. The CM Publisher is just the top one, and for the content service there is this bottom extension is the one that would be loaded. But as, as was mentioned before, all, in this example, all three extensions would sit within a single package, add-on package, um, and each of those subsystems would essentially download that same zip package and act upon it accordingly. And Andre is going to describe the... the yeah, so I, uh, let's talk about actually how it works. So as a, as a first step, what you do, you upload your add-on uh, to the add-on service. Uh, the package is stored in the database or local file storage or AWS uh, S3 bucket, uh, depends on, the, on your configuration. Uh, application. Uh, in this case, it can be either content manager uh, client or a DXD client gets a list of add-ons. Uh, it uh, unpacks them and notifies all the extension points uh, that this updated list of add-ons. Uh, each extension point requests uh, all relevant extensions of its certain type and loads it. Uh, the extension point validates the extension uh, data uh, properties as well as uh, binary data and actually loads the extension. And okay, and from a DXD loading perspective, there's a there's a couple of configuration points that we're using in order to um, load these extensions. So there's still support. All of our services have always had support for loading extensions off a local file system. Um, but we now add this new um, configuration point that if the Trillion Adam service URL is defined within the environment, the services will look to that add-on service, and then it will use whatever extensions are loaded in that service whilst that specific delivery service is being loaded. In this current release, they're queried on startup when the services to determine which extensions are loaded. OK, so what what actually you can expect uh, from the add-on service uh, feature list in 9.1? Uh, as was mentioned, it will be REST API. Of course, it will be UI, uh, where you, you will be able to see the list of uh, packages. You will be able to upload the package, download the package, uh, delete, and as well uh, see details and the statuses for the package. Uh, as was mentioned on the architectural slide, uh, role-based authorization. So we are expecting to have uh, three roles, uh, administrator, uh, read-only user, and service role for clients like uh, content manager or dynamic experience delivery. HTTPS support in this scope. 
uh, you will be able to store your binary. So basically the binary package either in the same database as where you store all the information about uh, the packages like statuses, uh, metadata, whatever. You'll be able to store the binary package uh, to the database. Uh, local file system or, or, or our ss3 bucket depends on your priorities uh, or security settings uh, we will support uh, microsoft sql server uh, oracle and aurora as a database uh, databases uh, as i already mentioned that uh, you will be able to see the status for the add-on and for its extensions and uh, we allow you to store a custom configuration file for the add-on. Uh, basically, it means that uh, you will be able to store any add-on specific data for, for the environment in this uh, uh, custom configuration file. For example, you can store uh, search endpoints for live and for staging DXD environments, or you can store some uh, group information uh, or user information for the event system. Uh, looking at the roadmap for Don service post 9.1 release, uh, we are looking into the Visual Studio integration that will help the developers uh, will help developers to uh, build easy easy to build uh, extension and add-on and uh, collect and build the manifest file and package everything uh, as a, a build process for the for your extension as well we would like to have to add enable disable feature for the add-on to be able to either enable or disable it from the add-on UI. Uh, add-on dependencies and prerequisites. Uh, in case one of the packages uh, depends on another one or requires another one. Uh, Hotix deployment. Uh, Multi-language support. Uh, it's about uh, supporting the different languages in, in the add-on service UI. Uh, add-on versioning and history. Uh, the feature is about uh, to be able to roll back to the previous version of the add-on in case you have issues with new one that was currently uploaded. Uh, development testing acceptance production environment support to be able to differentiate on which uh, environment from the list of your environments you would like to promote this extension. For example, you would like to promote it to the uh, testing environment, but it's not uh, acceptable to promote it to acceptance one yet. Uh, you would like to have integration with SDL App Store and all others, like Alchemy, for example. And uh, the last one in the list, uh, support for SDL to John Docs extension points. And uh, we will go to the demo part. Let me share my screen. So add-on service will be integrated into the uh, frame navigation uh, menu. So you will be able to browse it directly from your Tedion suit installation. Uh, currently this uh, instance is not protected, not secured. So in this case you will see this uh, 
message saying that uh, you need still to enable authentication to, in, to, uh, to the add-on service. We are expecting uh, that some uh, developers will use it unprotected uh, to simplify the deployment. Uh, let's upload some package. So basically, uh, this package, uh, this is a list of packages, and you see that we uploaded the package, but uh, it requires a configuration file it to be enabled. So let's go through the to, to the list of the uh, to, to the details of the package. Uh, you see the list of extensions that is inside this package. Let's upload configuration of files that requires for it and see the status. So it reported success status. Uh, at least some extensions reported success. Uh, others are still pending activation. Uh, it, it might happen that uh, some of the extensions already initialized and others are still pending activation. So let's check what actually it, uh, what value it brings to the system. Uh, looking at the list, we can see it's, uh, it should be YouTube connector. It should be simple event system and uh, quietly used uh, extension uh, republish from publish queue as well as uh, some simple DXD extension. Let's reload UI to enable new JavaScript and other files. So as you can see, connector is already available and you directly can browse and uh, use it. So thumbnails is loaded, so it's working on the uh, and working and was loaded on the fly. Uh, publish queue extension. So uh, new con uh, new entry in context menu was added, and you actually can use it and trigger the new publishing for the item. And as well, some really simple event system extension that will, that is modifying the title of the component. Uh, as well is initialized. Oh, I'm passing uh, voice to the band so he can explain a bit about the okay. extension. Thanks, Andrew. So in this particular example, you saw that there was a, a notable config extension point and the service would um, load that extension. We obviously ignore the other three extension points um, when it makes next files up. Uh, Obviously, there's a reason that it's not currently lo reloading extensions on the fly, the delivery layer. Um, there's some technical challenges because we're, particularly with the uh, GraphQL extensions, that we have to um, kind of rewire the schema um, during that extension loading mechanism. So to actually do that within the, the DXD service layer, is um, a bit of a challenge in this current release. So in this in this release, we're just just doing it on startup. Okay, so I think that brings to an end what we were going to show today in this session. Um, obviously, there are any further further set further questions, we'll, we'll pick that up in a minute, but just to advertise, there is another session coming up 
in a couple of weeks, which will be discussing the uh, new DXA features beyond the current version. That should be worth watching because it's, um, it'll bring together a lot of the, the work we've done for Sites 9 and how we're bringing that to the new versions of DXA. But if we fire over now to the Q&A session, um, if you have questions, please, please send them now to the appropriate window and we will try and answer them between us. No questions yet. Well, if there are no other questions, um, then we can bring this session to a close. But if you do have any questions, by all means, reach out to the product management team um, or any of your contacts with uh, the business, and we will we'll endeavour to answer them prior to the 9-1 release, if that's useful. Okay, well thanks everyone for joining today. I hope that's been a, a bit of an insight into what it is we're going to be delivering with the, the forthcoming Site 9 release. Thank you everyone. Thanks very much.